In Canada, the Indian residential school system was a network for boarding schools for Indigenous peoples. It was funded by the Canadian government and run by Christian cultures. The school system was created for the purpose of removing Indigenous children from their influence of their own culture. Over 150,000 children were taken from their homes and placed in the residential schools. They were suffered from all kinds of abuse and horrible treatment. Some did not survive. This is the story of a survivor named Olamon Pokiak. When I was a young girl, outsiders came flitting about the north. They plucked us from our homes on scattered islands of the Arctic Ocean and carried us back to the nests they called schools. My older half-sister, Konik, had been plucked before I was born, who we called her Rosie after her return. She would tell me nothing about the school. What was it like? What was what like? The outsider's school. I don't know, you asked too many questions. But you learned how to read. It must have been very exciting. They cut our hair, they made you do chores all day long and then kneel to ask for forgiveness. It's only hair. It isn't just your hair, Olamon. They take everything. I thought Rosie was lucky. Her aunt had allowed her to go. I knew I needed to convince my father to allow me. One day at the end of February 1944, when the sun had just begun to return to the sky, my father took me hunting with him. We traveled by dog sled for several hours until we came to a place where the game was plentiful. Father, can I go to the outsider's school this year? No. But you and Rosie both went and soon I'll be eight years old. In late May, when the sun stood constant watching the sky, I asked him once again to allow me to go to school. Father, 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 please, father, please, can I go to the school this year? You are a stubborn girl. Do you see this rock? It once was jagged and full of sharp, jutting points. But the water of the ocean slapped and slapped at it, carrying away the angles and edges. Now it is nothing but a small pebble. That is what the outsiders will do to you at the school. Father, the water did not change the stone inside the rock. Besides, I'm not a rock, I'm a girl. I can move and should not be stuck upon the shore for eternity. You are a clever one. I suppose if I don't let you go, I'll never hear the end of it.
You know the nuns will cut your hair. Are you sure you still want to attend the school? Yes! They will make you work hard. Harder than you do when you help your father. I'm strong. They will not be kind to you. They are not your family. And they are not like us. Are both those big buildings schools? No, only that one. The other is the hospital, where you will be trained when you are old enough. You may be asked to help out there at times. A nurse? That sounds like fun. I'm glad you've come to your senses. You certainly can't teach her the things she needs to know. <clears throat> The big nun pulled me up the stairs and took me to a place where the other girls were lined up. She clutched a large pair of shears, and catching a firm hold of one of my long braids, the nun snipped it off with a clean slice. I was horrified. I stood sobbing in humiliation. Who do you think you are? I'm Olamon Pokiak. We use our Christian names here, and... We speak English. You are Margaret. She could say what she wanted. I knew my grandfather had named me. It was Ulamon. Next, we had to clean the school. We had to wipe down the desks, the walls, and the floor with the harsh-smelling liquid. We scrubbed the floor until it was smooth and slick as ice. By the end of my first day, the only book I had touched were the ones I dusted. Margaret, I want you to read out loud. Well... How did the raven expect us to learn without speaking to us in our own language so we could understand? The raven stopped me. She put a brush in my hand and pointed to the colossal chalkboards. Every time the blackboard was to be cleaned or a floor mopped, the raven was sure to put me to work doing it. One evening in October, after a hard day of the raven's education, I sat over my bowl of cabbage soup on the long dining hall. My father's sled dogs would not eat this meatless mush. I refused to let it touch my lips. Perhaps you need a little help with your appetite. If I had a pocket of stones, I would shoo you with a storm of pebbles. I can see you seem to require a little more education. One day, my friend Agnes burst through the door with an explosion of excitement. We've got new stockings. Aren't they beautiful? Everyone is getting new stockings. The raven had played a heartless trick on me. Embarrassment and anger swelled in my heart. The stockings made my legs look bigger than they already were. I stared at my big, fat, red legs. The laughter and the teasing of the other girls enveloped me. One day, the raven entered the classroom and told us that we would write letters home to our parents. I could hardly restrain myself in my seat. Dear mother and father, I hate this school. You were right. The food is awful and the nuns are very mean. They won't even let me wear the stockings you bought for me. As you can see, I've already learned to read and write. Please come and get me as soon as you can. I'm ready to go home. Love, Olman. I came up with a plan. On Sunday, I was working in the laundry room. I stripped off the stockings and shoved them into the blazing fire beneath the vat. The hideous things sizzled and crackled in the fire as they shrank before my eyes and evaporated into a thin wisp of smoke. At times, I felt as though my parents might forget me. 
But after two long years, I headed back home on the North Star. My father knew me right away and wrapped his arms around me. My curiosity had led me far away and now here. I was after two years satisfied that I now know what happened to girls who went down rabbit holes.